Stones album, which is not out till next year. We'll play them once and once only, and that's tonight. So if you're a fan, keep it on 1FM for that. Curve, box set, couple of records time. Part of a, an occasional series we're going to do on the show. Uh, welcome, Mike Edwards. And first, let's listen to Jesus Jones, Zeros and Ones. This is a work in progress with Mike Edwards of Jesus Jones. That was Zeros and Ones. Welcome to 1FM. Thank you. In the middle of the uh, recording of an album, it's quite an interesting time. I think before you did the last album, you did a session for this show. Yeah. And I think I remember you saying that it's quite nice to sort of to play the songs for a radio program when you're not quite sure how the album is going to end up because uh, you get some chance to work through them. You mean to actually like sort of play them live? Yeah. Or, which, yeah. Is, which is more or less what you do in a session for 1FM. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. I mean... That, that's definitely the case. Yeah, I think it's, it always gives you an insight. It certainly gives an audience an in, in, insight into how um, the stuff's going to sound when you play it live. Because, you know, when you do a session that is live, everyone sets up in a room. In fact, as they, as they don't really do anymore, I think, well, certainly as we don't do, mm. you know, it is a chance to sort of play things live and your, your audience get to hear, and you get to hear what, what, what actually sound, what you sound like playing together, which, um, you know, sometimes is good and sometimes it isn't. Because when you record an album, you do bit bit by bit, and you you know you could take yeah. forever to yeah. get something exactly right because you can fiddle with it. But when you play something all together as a band, it's it's. It's well, not. I mean, in, in our case, it's actually different from that. I mean, we, we've, we've, we're doing this very different way of recording. I mean, although, although the band all play, um, it, we tend to play directly onto a computer rather than directly onto tape. Um, and, of course, you know, sort of being, being uh, the technology as it is, it means everything's editable afterwards. So you don't really get much time hanging around waiting for people to do correct takes because, you know, if, they're, if they don't do a correct take, you get in there with your little mouse and you, like, sort of, you know, move and it you here, fix move it. it. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. So in the preparation for the album that you're now working on, yeah. Zero, and ones uh, is coming from you have to have incredible faith in in your own ideas don't you mm. if you've no idea at the moment how this will sound with the band you must yeah. just sort of have a vision of how it will end up um, pretty much so, but I think it's more a case of, of sort of jamming with it as it comes along. I mean, and, and this is another great advantage of technology. You, c you can actually sort of put all the ideas down in, in one go, and you mess around with them if you don't like to take them out. You don't have to sit around in rehearsal studios forever getting things right. You can actually, you get a much better idea of what it's going to sound like in, in the long run by using samplers and synths and all this sort of stuff, by using this, this sort of technology. I mean, this is like one of the reasons we've gone for it. I think as a writer, using this stuff is, is a lot more interesting than having, having to, to get a band to play this stuff back to you. 
Let's talk about this new record then. How many months away is it? Well, from finish, it's about two and a half weeks away. Um, but release is a different matter. Um, it's going to come out, it looks like it'll be out in January or, or February. I mean, hopefully January, the soon, sooner the better. But it was just the way it goes because, you know, um, of all the success we've had around the world, the record company is very anxious that this sort of album is explodes around the world on time and by the time you sort of like organize what the Japanese are doing, what the Australians are doing, the Americans, the, the Belgians or the English, what, all this sort of stuff, you know, it, it adds so much delay into the into the, the usual things of just getting like artwork ready and, and all that sort of stuff. So I mean that's the reason for the delay is it's generally like a three month um, period for the record company to get the tapes ready, turn it into an album and then extra little delays getting everything sorted out. But you're used to this now. Do you quite like the way this all happens? I mean it's, it's kind of mm. out of your hands. Would you no, like it, no, Would you I, like I, it to I, be I more in your hands? The only thing I really, I really object to is just the amount of time. I mean, you know, there are good reasons for it, and it won't change. But it really annoys me that that um, I can't be like sort of uh, so many dance labels. You know, you you go into a club, you hear a great tune, you rip it off the next day, and it's out, and it's out on record the week after that. It's the ideal situation for us, especially because so much of what we do is based in contemporary st in stuff, you know. I mean, I hear stuff that I started writing at the end of the Doubt sessions, um, you know, that was very contemporary, that was like sort of on the forefront of, of like of, of dance music then, whatever. And now it sounds very dated, you know. <laughs> now let's go through the new album scrolling things out because they're out of date. It's, it's good to do that, though, but it is a little annoying. It's a big worry when you have to wait to get the record out. Will it still be in date? We won't be past its yeah. sell-by date by the time it's out. And we're used to that as well. I mean, so much of Doubt was written at the end when Liquid came out things like international bright young thing I thought oh you know this sounds so old and corny now you know I really don't like this but it didn't really stop it it didn't stop it going top 10 you know so tell me about this next song devil let's say about this one um, it's so long since, since I've written it I, I tend to sort of forget <laughs> these things you know the, the first ones the first bits of the album to be finished always the, the ones you, you, you forget about quickest um, devil is, is one of my sort of main preoccupations my, my own little sort of things that I th think, think probably will, people get very bored with after a while is, is my kid was going on about nostalgia again I think nostalgia is one of the sort of um, domineering elements of our age I mean I had this sort of huge conversation huge arguments with it with um, people in, in studios that we're working in about how it's not just rock music that that is dreadfully revivalist. I mean, it's like all sections of society. You see it on movies. television adverts, movies, certainly, yeah. Um, even the, um, you know, clothing. It's every every element element of our culture is being sort of, I, I think, ruined by nostalgia. It's very little experimentation, very little moving forward. And this is a song that sort of deals with that in in a way. I think that both, hopefully, lyrically and musically, um, certainly musically, I'd like to think, is is n not retrogressive. Is is trying to sort of show, is trying to give some answers for this. This has been work in progress with. My Mike Edwards of Jesus Jones, don't expect the album before next year. Thank you very much. Thank okay.
doesn't excite you about the potential of the next Jesus Jones album, nothing. Well, that sounds really very good. Thanks again to Mike Edwards. You heard Zeros and Ones and Devil. I think that's going to be a very big album for them. When... Hi!